How do? Last time we made a template and stuck some brown wood together and we're going to be cutting this out later on. But first, we're going to mess about with some maple. So we now have back of guitar, front of guitar, guitar shape. Now what we also need is a maple strip to make a bit of a sandwich for the body as well, just to thicken it out a little bit more, allow the volume to resonate inside. So basically we're going to use these maple sticks to create a frame that goes all the way around the edge. Now how I'm going to do that is cut it into sections and then glue them side by side and then we can cut them out to the right shape externally and internally. taken that off the template onto a nice flat surface leave that to dry that's going to be my central wall in the body now little side note i have not glued in this block here and you'll find out why later so with that center band glued up waiting to dry we can start cutting out these top and bottom sections so time to get the masking tape and super glue out and stick these on First run around with the template, we've now got two options to finish off the rest of this thickness. One of them is to change the bit on the router so that we have the bearing at the bottom and then flip this upside down to copy that. The other option, and the one I'm going to go for, is to put a block underneath with masking tape and super glue so I can stick this in the vise so it looks just like that. That way, when we go around and trace this area with the bearing on the router, the bottom of the bit can poke out and it doesn't just rip all hell on your workshop. And repeat again for the second one. For the middle section, I've stuck it down to a sacrificial piece of plywood, uh, which is just going to keep everything a little bit more stable, not only as we cut out the outside shape, but also as we then go back in, to cut the internal shape out as well. So this is gonna end up being a wall of maybe about three mil thick, something like that. And with that, I think I've officially used up the world supply of masking tape. So there we go. That probably looks a bit epically thick at the moment. Now we've got the sacrificial plywood still attached to the maple. Uh, but that thickness gives me a little bit of playroom for sanding down in the center uh, and don't forget around the edge it's actually only going to be up to there because of all that curve that we're going to put into it but look at what we've got in the maple there that kind of light and dark flow through there it does the same on that side as well well i think we've looked out with that and now it's time to actually start shaping the body this is the fun bit but we're not going to start with the top. That's going to be next week's video because that's going to include how to do the neck break angle and building the bridge at the same time. So that's next week's fun. This week's fun is going to be sorting out this back panel. Now, one of the big things is making sure that you actually carve the correct side because if I do that side, I'm kind of hammered. So, that's the side we're working to. We want to get all those beautiful shapes and curves just like we have on the full-size archtop guitar. Let's grab a pencil and some chisels and some files and some sanding and some fun and stuff. Yee! The first thing I'm going to do is just score a line, ooh, about that thick, all the way around it. That's going to be the edge that you're going to see 
every other part of the back of this guitar, ukulele, is going to be curved. Oh, don't you love it when it meets up at the end like that? Woohoo! Right, now then, also what I'm going to do, because I did this on the guitar, is this little lump here is where the heel of the neck is going to be. And on the back, I don't have that section. I've got it on the maple and I've got it on the front for where the neck attaches. But I'm actually going to cut that section off so that it flows around something like that. Right, so let's cut that bit off first, then we can start shaping this. There we go, a little bit of bandsaw action that you don't need to bother seeing, and so we've got that line. Right, so how are we going to create the big bows and curves and things like that? Well, basically, we're going to chop off in straight lines from there to a mark on this point, and then we go through in half. In the same way that we generally cut out the back of a neck, which we'll obviously get to a bit more when we do the neck. So what I'm going to do is go from the centre line to that widest point there, and go roughly central, doesn't need to be perfect, something like that, okay? Then, I'm going to try and keep the same distance from the edge all the way around, like that. So that's going to come in and go back out, and there'll be a point where that kind of stops, like that. Now, can you see that pencil line on there? I hope you can. It goes around this area and it kind of comes into almost a line, single line on these sections, which is absolutely fine. You can just kind of manipulate that a little bit. So that's going around there. So now I'm going to cut in straight lines between there and there. So there we go, all those lines cut out, and we've just gone from the line we scored down there, down to the line we scored down that bit. Well, close to anyway. Now, two big advantages of doing all of those lines with the saw. First one is that I'm going to use a chisel to remove all of that waste, all of that excess wood. And all of these lines are going to stop that wood from possibly splitting anywhere I don't want it to. They're called stop cuts and it does exactly that. You can go in with a chisel, you can crack it all away and it leaves you with a safe cut all the way through. But you might not want to remove all of this waste with a chisel. So there's still an advantage to doing all of this sawing first. It means it gives you a guide as to how far down you need to go. So whether you're going to use a Dremel, a file, a rasp, an angle grinder, a big belt sander, whatever it is you're going to do, these cuts give you a perfect access point to know exactly how deep you're going to go at each stage. Now, I love a bit of chisel action, so I'm going to go in straight away and start chipping out a lot of this excess in big chunks, really quick. And you can see there how quickly we can just remove all of that excess. And I know I'm not going too far because I'm not going down further than those cut marks. There we go, that's all that excess removed and that took no more than 10 minutes um, yes, that takes a little bit of cleaning up, but nothing like the amount of time and dust and all the rest of the rubbish that would happen if you go at it with something like an angle grinder or a sander of some sort. Uh, now I'm just going to go around with the rasp just to smooth off those rough edges. Then we'll recut the second bevel that can then start creating curves. So we can see there, we're pretty much down to each line, so we know it's consistent all the way through. Uh, so now I'm going to do the same thing again, halfway through this new cut, and then the same distance away from there. So then I'm going to saw from this point to this point, all the way around again, 
and it will start to create an arc that goes through. And once we've gone all the way around, we get something a bit like that. Now we could keep halving all the way through and getting less and less taken off each time. But already just with those two cuts, you can see we've got a relatively decent arc on there already. So we've got flat in the middle, first cut, second cut, edge. Now it's not going to take much to just start going through there and just eyeballing it with rasps and files and things just to start smoothing that off all the way over. Just keep going at it until you're happy with the shape. So just using the rough side and smooth side of a Shinto saw rasp, um, very, very quickly got that down to feeling really nice. And actually feel is almost a bigger guide than what it looks like. As you're going through and you're taking off those high spots, really feel what's going on. Your fingers will tell you where there's a flat spot and where there's a ridge that you still need to get rid of, probably more effectively than what you can see with your eyes. Now, that's given me a lovely shape but it's obviously not smooth yet. Now again, I could go over that now with any kind of sander, uh, but I might take off more than I want it to. And also again, it's gonna create a lot of dust in this tiny workshop. So I like to use a card scraper. Now you might be stunned to find that in this immaculate workshop that's perfectly clean and tidy, I can't for the life of me and my card scraper. <laughs> so here's a little top tip. If you either haven't got one or can't find yours, you can buy one. You can actually make one from old saw blades. But as a temporary thing, get the metal ruler that you use most, especially if you use one with a marking knife. That ruler will have a tiny little burr on the end of it. So actually, on here, we're going to have four bears. One, two, three and pretty much the full length of that is pre-sharpened ready to go so all you need to do is then just start going through and it will actually work quite nicely as a card scraper just on its own right you can see it starts to take off dust no it's not as good as a proper scraper but in a pinch it'll actually work Come on, that is not a bad finish from a flipping roller. <laughs> you gotta be impressed with that, haven't you? Absolutely gorgeous, I love it! Outside curve, done. Right, now I can't make my mind up yet whether I want to do the front one of these next or the neck, just to change things up a little bit. Well, I suppose while I make that decision, you watch this video because you'll love it. And I'll see you next week. Take care, sharpen your tools and find those scrapers. And I'll see you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.